Send a mojito. Very, very simple. I'm going to show you how to make a classic mojito, and then I'm going to blow your little minds about how you can kind of pimp mojitos up. All right, so stay tuned. I might, the whole of the floor behind me is ready to blow your mind. So mojitos, we're going to do classic. We're going to do standard. Five simple ingredients. One, two. Uh, that's my almond syrup. Sugar syrup. Three. For some reason, my sugar, my morning sugar syrup's gone missing. I reckon, I reckon I might have stolen it, taken it home. Oops. Um, but we've got the morning, uh, we've got sugar, homemade sugar syrup. We've got some mints there and we have got some soda water there. So I'll run you through how to make a mojito banging every single time and then we're going to pimp it up. So if you want the pimped up versions, wait. If you want to know how to make a mojito properly now, sorry, there we go, OCD kicking in, uh, then that's what we are going to do. So, um, Instagram. The one thing we didn't contemplate with Instagram is that the wallpaper only goes to there, so I've had to zoom in, which means you're not getting the width on Instagram lives. Sorry, we didn't we didn't contemplate that. Well, we, the raw we, me, we didn't contemplate that. So we should have taken the wallpaper a bit higher, but there we go. You learn you learn your lesson, don't you? So Majitos. Let's call them Majitos, Cornish, Cornish uh, Essex Chav, Cornish Chav, there we go. So Mojitos, really, really simple. I'm going to show you the faff-free version today. You can go normal version. To be fair, it's only a little bit of muddling, but I'm going to show you the faff-free version. So, as I said, five ingredients. Let's get the old mint out of the old, the old packet. All my, mint, all my mint plants are dying at home, so we're, we're, back, to, we're back to buying mint. So... It smells good though. It smells really, really good. She never saved. What says? Who's not saving any? Glass. I actually made my a mojito for the wife in a hurricane. Good, good wife. That's what we say. So mojito, very, very simply, and I guarantee it. If if it doesn't taste right for you, it's just one simple thing, and that's all it is. And that's what kind of blows people's minds because traditionally when I do master classes. Um, they, oh, I don't like the mojito, I don't like that. And then after I've explained it, they look on their faces, they're like, oh, wow, I really like that. It's such an easy cocktail, but it's such an easy cocktail to mess up as well. So we are going to do it. I've got, I've got another lime here, just cut in half. Typically, I would always say do the juice of one lime, which will, depend on how juicy your limes are, they're going to be about 25 mil, 15, 20, 25 mil, depending on what they are. So you want the juice of a whole lime. And if anyone is playing along, if Paragon, Paragon Brands, uh, whatever your real name is, but Paragon, if you are playing along, say hello in the comments below. Don't send us emails, get involved in the old comments. Um, so, juice of a lime. Squeeze a whole lime in there. So we've got one. And then keep keep that, because that could be a garnish later. Well, actually, I'll show you what you can do with this in a second. Uh, so we squeeze the other bit in there. So we've got that. Now, traditionally, I would I teach when I do hen parties and that I teach them how to muddle down because it's more fun in it bashing min, uh, bashing limes about with a muddler and it's some innuendos that come out about the muddler so we we have to use the muddler. However, faff free for speed at home, we just juice. We just use lime juice. Don't use the bottles of Jif Lime and Tesco's own brand lime or anything like that. Anything that says from concentrate, no, no, no. This stuff is cool because it is a hundred percent lime juice. Uh, just with a bit of antioxidant in there. Funkin have got a very similar product as well. Again, just a tiny, tiny bit of antioxidant in there. Or real limes. Do not use that stuff that you get in little bottles from the supermarket. It says from concentrate. Now, the thing I love to do as well, if I'm doing the fat-free method, and you don't have to do this, but the thing I love to do is just kind of chop that in half, chop it in half again. So you've got the quarters, and you just put them in just for a bit of texture, a bit of garnish, and you're also getting a little bit of zest coming out as well. All right, so we've got that. So we've got the lime taken care of. Essentially a shot of lime juice, 25 minutes. Now, sugar syrup, uh, homemade. You've all watched the videos, two parts sugar, one part water, but it's granulated or castor, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's no rules about brown and demerara sugar and all that kind of malarkey. If you want to use that, you go for your lives. This is your mojito, not mine, yours. You're drinking it. So. We always start off with 15 mil, half a shot of sugar syrup. Now, here's the thing. Every single one of you will have a completely different palette. And I'm going to go full masterclass, my dear. I'm going to be asking for audience participation, uh, but it's not going to work, obviously, because there's no one here in front of me. This is the simple thing. Everyone's got a different palette. All right, everyone will have different sweetness levels in their mojitos and daiquiris. It's just how it is. And the best way to explain this, I normally do this, stick your hands up if you have sugar in your tea and coffee. 
and then normally half the room will go stick their hands up, the other half won't. What that tells me straight away is that half the room's got a sweeter tooth than the other half. Now with cocktails, it's a lot easier to sweeten a cocktail up at the end than it is to sour it back down. So if you make it too sweet at the start, that's it, it's gone, it's messed up. So you can't sour it back down. But if it's not sweet enough, and that'll be the only thing that's wrong with it, sorry, I've, I've talked to you on Instagram as well, the only thing will be wrong with it will be the sugar level. So you just add a tiny bit more sugar. That is it. And you'll soon know when it's not balanced for you because you'll get the kind of citrus and you'll get a, that. And that just means you need to add a bit more sugar. So that is it. So half a shot, 15 mil, one five of sugar syrup. And I know that is perfect for me. That is absolutely perfect, all right? I will blow your minds with sugar syrup in a second when we come on to other products, because sometimes you might not even need that. Uh, so we'll do that. So we've got that, we've got the sugar, we've got our limes. Uh, we are gonna go for, yeah, let's go for the rum. I've got it in my hand now. It doesn't really matter on the order. Um, I've got I've got 50 mil here, but 50 mil, 60 mil, whatever your double bubbles are, whichever part of the world you're in, 50 mil double bubble of your rum. Plain rum, I'm not talking about any other rums just for the time being. Just plain, decent, white rum, whatever you've got. We've got this out for the old Long Island iced teas a bit later. So even if you're going Tesco's white rum, you know, whatever. 50 mil double bubble, all right? I've got that. Now we want some mint. Is there any comments? Zest is best, no, that's cool. So Tim, Tim takes sugar in his tea and coffee. There we go. See, Tim, you've got a sweeter palate than me, for instance. I don't take sugar in my tea and coffee. So we've got mint now. We want, depending on the size of your mint leaves, these are, let's, let's see if we can get these. These are decent sized mint leaves. There you go, Instagrammers, IGers, down with the kids. Uh, so we've got that decent size. I'm gonna go back eight to eight of these. If you've got slightly smaller mint leaves, you want about 10, maybe. Now the big bartender failing for me is, uh, I'm gonna go two more, just because. The big bartender failing with me is they'll put uh, mint in with the limes and then they'll muddle it. They'll get the muddler. Now, it's fine if you are going to use uh, the back end of like a bar spoon like that and gently press. That's fine. It's when you use a muddler like that that's got little ridges. There we go, Instagram, like that. You are just going to shred your mint and you're just going to bruise it and you're going to get the bitterness and you really, really don't want that. So never, ever muddle mint. All we need to do, and the women absolutely love this, pretend it's their bloke, palm your hand, give it a spank, that's it, you send a couple of mint leaves flying and we just pop them in. That spank will just awake the aroma and that's all you need to do with the mint, all right? And already it's like doubled in, in aroma. It just tastes, it just smells amazing there. So we don't need to do anything else with the mint apart from spank it and muddle it, all right? So we got that. Uh, so we've got four ingredients. We've got rum, we've got sugar, we've got a lime, we've got a mint. The final ingredient is soda water. It's a national crisis going on at the moment with soda water and tonic water and God knows what because of the CO2 levels. So uh, again, I've got some other products that you will help you out coming up in a second. But so soda water is traditional. Uh, can you use lemonade, Sprite? Yes, you can. Just don't forget they are sweetened. So, you know, if, you, if you're using that, then you really want to dial your sugar back. Uh, and then you can kind of, so even less sugar to start off with than what I did, uh, because you can add more sugar at the end, okay? So Sprite and lemonade, they're a lot sweeter than soda water. Now, no need to measure. What I traditionally say, and this will depend on the type of ice you're using as well, is kind of like just over a third, between a third and half fill your glass, whatever that is in ounces, quarters, yeah? Now, so that's it. We've got, I don't know, what's that? Two, two, six, no, that's, that's a third, isn't it? I don't know what that is in, in ratios, but there we go, about about there on your glass. So it's just under halfway. Now, you can, I always use crushed ice in my mini toast because it looks better, but if you're using cubed ice, this is it. Cubed ice, you would traditionally use a tiny bit more soda water because obviously the crushed ice is gonna melt a little bit quicker and it's gonna give you that dilution that you need, whereas cubed ice isn't. So you need that tiny little bit of extra dilution from your soda water if you're using cubed ice. That's it, not much more, like not up here, just there. Now, uh, let's use this one. So I've got a bit of crushed ice, pop that in. Never fill it up straight away to the top. Just about there, it's fine, so your liquid is still here. Simply because we now need to bring the limes, the mint, the sugar to the top, all right? And again, we don't use 
granulated or caster sugar anymore because we haven't got time, you know, to stand there and dissolve all those little bits of sugar granules. So we use syrup. That's why we use syrup. 99% of bars these days would use sugar, uh, would use syrup. I'm not talking about the Caribbean. I'm talking worldwide. All right. So uh, long bar spoon. Where have you got spoon, fork, whatever, uh, and just churn. Bring the limes and the mint to the top. Good stir fruit. That's that. See, it's so good, it's so good. Nice, fresh, zesty, citrusy, minty. Top up with a bit more crushed ice. Never half fill your glass with ice because obviously the more ice you have in your glass, the colder the drink's gonna be, therefore the ice is gonna stay colder for longer, meaning the less dilution. If you only put a tiny bit of ice in there, tiny bit, it's just gonna melt quicker and you're just gonna end up with a watered down drink. That is why we pack our glasses full of ice, especially in mojitos. The more ice you can get in your glass, the better, because then you are all you are gonna taste is rum, limes, mint, and a tiny bit of soda water. You're not gonna taste water, all right? Now the final little trick is the, the mint, plenty of mint, there we go, let's just get loads, that'll do. Plenty of mint, just, you don't faff around with one little sprig, plenty of mint, like a whole bush, back of your hand, Pop that in, and if I've got it, the straw always goes beside the mint, so when you have a little sip, it's the mint that's going straight up your nostrils. And that is as easy as a mojito gets. Five simple ingredients. It, try it, if you are making it along now, try it. I promise you, if it doesn't taste right, just add a tiny little bit more sugar, okay? Just keep adding tiny amounts until it's bang on perfect for you. That's all it'll be. It won't be kind of too citrus. It won't be like horrible in that sense. It will just be the sugar levels. That's all. And every rum has like got a different sweetness to it anyway. So that's it. That's mojitos. Uh, right. Let's just hang on. There's kind of, there's a lot of comments coming in here. Let me just make sure I've not missed any questions. Favorite part is spank the mint. That was for you, Damo. Uh, nice little spank. Claire likes the nice little spank. Claire, there we go, Claire. Uh, Timmy K's got a question. Timmy K. Can't I just use mint syrup? That is the even more faff-free version. I actually, there we go, there we go, Instagram. I know it's back to front for you, sorry. That's Instagram's problem. We can't do it there, but there we go. I actually really do rate that, <laughs> I really do. So you would use that in replacement of that and your mint, yeah? That's, it's, it's really good. I, I'm, I'm a big fan, big, big fan because it just works. If you want to make your own mint syrup, just make your own sugar syrup and um, steep it in, in plenty of fresh mint for a day, half a day, three days, whatever, until it's nice and minty. So yeah, just play about with that. But yeah, big, big fan of that, Tim. Big, big fan. Right. Wish I was drinking midnight. So uh, let me just kind of run you through. I'm going to drink this one now. So you if you're in the office. This is mine. <laughs> And that is so, so good. Honestly, absolutely love that. Now, we can pimp this up in various, it's not on the camera, on Instagram, there we go. Perhaps if I put it there, there we go. Right, we can pimp this up in so many directions now. So many directions. The two constants are obviously gonna be lime and mint. So they are gonna be in every single um, mojito that you make. You could try it with lemon juice, why not? But, you know, it's the lime and mint. It's the whole daiquiri thing. Lime and rum is just a match made in heaven. So there we go. So let's go back to front because I like I like saving the ultimate wow until last. I'm gonna, you know, I've got plenty of time before Grace is coming on. That's fine. So let's go back to front. Let's start off with the soda water. And this, this, this is the first way to pimp it up. You could make that exact same recipe. So your plain rum, your mint, your lime, your sugar, and then we can play about with the soda water. Easy peasy. The first one, where should we go? I've got these in no particular order here. The first one, I've run out of Aldi's fake um, Mediterranean tonic water, so I've brought in, I've got loads of, um, it's, I'll be honest, it's, it's a year and two months out of date because of COVID, but I've got loads of Mediterranean tonic water, fever trees left over at home. So it just bought out, be fine, absolutely fine, you know. Especially before, not used by. So Mediterranean tonic, I absolutely adore using Mediterranean tonic water as a soda replacement in mojitos, in Collins, like your gin drinks. 
I think that is a banging alternative. It's not quite as bitter quinine forward as uh, plain tonic waters, and it's got that lovely kind of citrusy slight hint. I can never remember it is. I think it's lemon thyme. I keep wanting to say rosemary, but I'm sh I swear it's lemon thyme that they use in there. I can't think. Natural floral botanicals. I think it's lemon thyme. Don't hold me to that. I keep wanting to say rosemary, but I know it's not rosemary. So that is your perfect quick and easy way to flip out. Just flip out your soda water for Fever Tree, Aldi, own brand. Uh, I was in white MS the other day. MS have got their own brand of own range of tonic waters now. They've gone head to head with Fever Tree. So they've got normal Mediterranean, uh, aromatic, uh, the Clementine one. All of those will work. It's just I prefer the Mediterranean. I think that is a quality mixer. All right. So that's your first avenue. Um, yes, Claire's got one. I haven't got any of that. I didn't bring it in. But as Claire's mentioned it, Claire's put ting in the uh, in the old chat. I've got some down here. This is Aldi's version of Lilt. Tropical Blast. There we go. Back to front. So Lilt. Obviously ting, for those of you who don't know, is just grapefruit soda. So it's like Lilt without the pineapple. That's all ting is. It's lovely. But my, I'm a big, big fan of Lilt. I absolutely love Lilt. And this has become my new favourite now because I can't, can never get Lilt in cans. I can only get two litre bottles. And I don't want a two litre bottle. I want cans. So I've got a, a massive stock of this now. I love this stuff. It's really, really good from Aldi. Half the price. So you can kind of do a pineapple and grapefruit. Just swap that out. You've got that. Um, let's go ginger, ginger ale root. I absolutely love uh, ginger ale in a mojito as well. Again, we're not playing around with the rums just yet. We're just doing bog standard soda swaps, all right? So ginger ale, that needs no introductions. You know what that is. Uh, and that in you guys over in America and Canada, that will look like your Canada Dry because it is Canada Dry. It's the same company over here. Um, so Schweppes ginger ale, but Fever Tree, don't write off Fever Tree because their ginger ale is pretty nice. But this one, I'll, I haven't forgotten you Instagram. This is one of my favorites, spiced orange ginger ale. Absolutely love that. There we go, Instagram, boom. Oh, wrong way, there we go. So spiced orange ginger ale. That is an amazing kind of riff on there. So you can kind of do ginger mojitos. Who says you have to use soda water? Well, there's, there's loads, there's hundreds of other brands that you can do, but the other one I will showcase because I love, uh, I love the girls to bits and I love the products. Um, you'll probably know these in cans more than anything. Waitrose, Ocado, uh, Wholesalers, anything like that. Double Dutch have been around quite a few years now. Uh, Dutch twins, Joyce and Reiser. Um, we've got that, I'll run you through them. Pomegranate and basil. They are so two of these are two of these are mixers and one's a tonic water. However, even the tonic water is kind of not that quilling forward. So they are more mixers, flavoured sodas than anything else. All right. So uh, pomegranate and basil. That's your first one. So that is really nice. There we go. Pomegranate and basil, cucumber and watermelon. That is absolutely amazing. Really kind of refreshing twist on uh, a mojito there. We haven't swapped anything out. We're just swapping the mixers out. That's all we're doing at the moment. Uh, and then cranberry and ginger. Again, really, really nice. Uh, kind of refreshing, not that cranberry forward. It's just a lovely kind of uh, berry notes mixer. I absolutely love that. So that is always um, different ways to go with the whole mixers and that. What's, uh, what do I say? The bars. Do bars in, in the UK not serve rum and orange juice? No, it's not that bars don't serve it. It's no one in the UK asks for it. Oh, rum and orange? No, no. Ginger beer, Coke. They're the, they're the big two in the UK. So that's, that's the first way to pimp it up. Obviously, your mixer. The second way to pimp it up, which way should we go now, is the sugar syrup. Of course, we could do wonderful different things here. Vanilla sugar. So same rum, vanilla mojitos. I did a video about this a couple of months ago now. Pina colada. So you've got a coconut and, um, oh, excuse me, coconut and uh, pineapple uh, syrup there. So again, plain soda water. You could play about with ginger, the ginger ales if you wanted to, or just f flip those up. We've got, what else? We've got, oh, I've got flipping hundreds down here. I've got tangerine, you know, all the William Fox stuff, mulled spice, rhubarb, ba bacon. <laughs> Uh, cola, we can do that. Uh, all this sort of stuff. Gingerbread, gingerbread mojitos, butterscotch, popcorn, pumpkin spice. Play about with the sugar syrups. Just whatever takes your fancy, whatever your favorite flavor is, uh, go for that. What else have we got down here? Cranberry, 
kiwi, kiwi mojitos, I did that, you know, kiwi mojitos. These are syrups, and um, again, you could go for something like the ODK or the Real or the Monin. What have we got? I've got them tucked away over here because they don't quite sort of fit on the shelves a little bit. We've got, we've got the Monin purees as well. Bear in mind, these are syrups as well, so they have got the sweetness in them. So you will interchange, sorry Insta, you will interchange your sugar syrup for these kind of purees because that's what they are. They're fruit, fruity mixes essentially, half puree, half sugar. So there will be the same sweetness. All right, so just play about. You don't, some, to some of them you might need to add a touch of sugar syrup to it, others you won't. Funkin are out and out fruit purees. So Funkin, you would add a tiny bit of sugar syrup to them uh, to bring out the flavors, especially like the strawberry and the raspberry because they are really tart without sugar. Um, but they are just, they, they allow you to balance, use the sugar that you want, whereas these are kind of pre-mixed with sugar. All right, now, here's possibly the most exciting. Let's have another sip. Um, Steely, I'm on my way in. Can I try the one with ginger, please? I might make you one if you if you come in. If you come in on camera, Mr. Steel. Uh, so here comes the most exciting bit. Where are we for time? We're cool for time. The most exciting bit. So let's stick to rum. So we're now we're going to swap out our base spirit with mojitos. Plain rum. You could go because I've got it here. Uh, an aged rum gold rum and to be fair it's aged as well they're kind of just there's a few brands that are white that have been charcoal filtered okay so uh, basically that they've been even this has been aged for three years but the reason it's clear is because it's sort of it's sort of been charcoal filtered so it's stripped back the color so very very similar products just one's clear one's dark um one's charcoal filtered one's not that's essentially it. so you could go like aged rums and there's many many different kind of aged rums gold rums that you could use in there i wouldn't necessarily use a dark rum Black rum, uh, like your goslings, your krakens. I don't think they've kind of got the flavor profiles for a mojito. But that's up to you. I'm not here to say whether you're right or wrong. Uh, that's down to you. So we've got that. We could all also go spiced rum. Because spiced rum is the big thing in the moment. It is coming. Uh, it's been coming now for a couple of years. Obviously, COVID interrupted that. But spiced rum, you know, and this one, take DMF. Um, they're not Cornish anymore, but that's why I like them. They used to be Cornish. Um, Vanilla, like spices, but it's kind of sherry notes to it as well. Uh, kind of lime, it's traditional kind of lime and vanilla spiced rum, but there are many, many different spiced rums out there. So you could go spiced rum, Chairman's Reserve is one of my favorites. So we can go that. Now, flavored rums. Flavored rums is a whole new category and uh, it's sort of propped up now in the last couple of years, okay? So the obvious one to start off with is coconut rum. Obviously, coconut mojitos. Uh, are amazing. I absolutely love them. Coconut and strawberry mojito, same as the daiquiri. You know, I absolutely love a coconut mojito. So that's one way you could go. Uh, excuse the noise, but oh, I've brought them all in and they now all live here. Boom, 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 boom. DMF, oh, that's the empty one, that's the full one. Dead Man's Fingers. Like all these different flavors, I won't get them all out, but there's, there's coffee in there, there's an empty bottle of hemp in there, but you've got passion fruit, hazelnut, which way around that? That's the banana one, that's the mango one, mango, raspberry, uh, lime, pineapple, all of those. You know, you can make a pineapple mojito, pineapple daiquiri with these, banana like that, mango. You could play about with that, but we don't stop there. This is where we get really exciting because the big one I get all the time is, oh, I'm not a massive rum fan. Look, let's be honest. These these are flavoured rums. They're not they're not proper rum in the sense that they are like your Havana's. They, you know, they're a million million miles away about from being proper rums. These are just kind of spirit liqueurs, essentially strong liqueurs. That's all they are, really. Uh, with rum as the base, much like a gin liqueur isn't really gin, it's just they've used gin as the base with a tiny, tiny bit of juniper uh, to kind of flavor up, flavor up spirit. So, we've got that. Can you guess where I'm going now? I'll save the best till last. The other little bag I brought in from home, these all now live here. JJ Whitley Vodkas, who says a mojito in these days has to be rum? All these flavored rhubarb mojitos, orange mojitos, passion fruit mojitos. What's that, raspberry vodka? Tim, Tim, Tim's gonna be so excited now. Tim is my, Tim is my vodka guy. Apple and lime. 
Uh, what are the last two? Toffee, maybe? Toffee, watermelon, and lime as well. So you can play about with all these. But, and they are amazing. I tell you what, my favorite two is rhubarb and the passion fruit there. And to be fair, the apple and lime's really good as well. But, what is the big trend at the moment? And not for long, because, you know, as I said, rum is coming. The big trend, obviously, for the last five, six, eight years is gin, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying a decent London dry gin. I don't think that's gonna work for anyone. It's called, kind of called a South Side. That, without ice shaken down, is and served up in a little Nick and Nora glass, is essentially a South Side, but with gin as the base. Um, I don't think that way. It's not one of my favorite cocktails and that as a plain juniper for with gin, proper gin. Uh, you know, for me, stick to the ice sort of serve like that. However, flavored gins, this is where we go up another notch. And obviously the big brand here is, is Whitley Neal comes out to play. Yes, there are many other flavored gins, but Whitley Neal is the big brand. This has to be one of my all time favorite mojitos, gooseberry gin, Whitley Neal's gooseberry gin. Absolutely gorgeous as a mojito. So just simply swap that out for your base rum. I love it to bits. Uh, we've obviously got my second favorite. Well, actually, oh, it's close. It's quince. Not many people know what quince is. They kind of avoid it thinking, oh, I'm not sure what that. Apple and pear. That's all it really is. It's a, it's a fruit crossed between an apple and a pear. It's gorgeous. So quince gin. You know, very, very close to being my favorite. I've got, I won't get them all out. I've got the raspberry, I've got the palm of violet, we've got the rhubarb and ginger. But the other notable shouts out that we have to do is the limited edition serves. Because those of you that have followed my channel for the last couple of years, even though I don't do those sort of cocktails anymore, that all lives on this channel. This, Whitley Neal's mango and lime gin, cracking, watermelon and kiwi gin. Honestly, if you are a gin lover, and it's nice, hot, sunny day, simply swap out uh, your rum for this and you have got banging mojitos. Absolutely. The cocktail police will come at you and say, oh, it's not really a mojito because you use a gin. Sodom, we don't care because honestly, that hands down all day, gooseberry mojitos. I can't split those two either, the mango and lime, the watermelon and kiwi. I adore them. They are just so, so good. If you're a pub, if you're a bar, honestly, Mojito, the way I kind of do consultancy, if I ever, if I, I haven't done some for ages now, but like building cocktail menus out, I'll just say, and they go down this thing, they always want like different mojitos and list them out, like raspberry, strawberry, blah, 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 blah. I just say, no, just have like your mojito on your menu. And then you do a mojito of the week, a mojito of the, like a couple of weeks or a month or whatever, because it creates rarity, it creates scarcity, and it creates that buzz, you know, oh, this week's mojito is mango and lime. You can go for, you can order like a case of six, for instance, get through that, and then when you've gotten that, you go to another flavor, like the watermelon and kiwi. And I guarantee it, that is the easiest way to make money in pubs and bars. It's the same with daiquiris, all those kind of plain cocktails that you can flavor up. You just have a daiquiri on your menu, you just have a mojito on the menu, and then you do the mojito of the week. A mojito in the night, mojito of the week, mojito of the month, whatever you've got. It just works. It's easiest cash you'll make because all of a sudden, you know, you stick that in a little poster, a little tent card, a uh, little display behind your bar, bang, 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 lots of mint, lots of limes. You are just going to sell tons of them. Uh, and that, boys and girls, is how you pimp up a mojito. 